Hi dear ones, this is Celeste with a new pick a card reading. If you are new to pick a card readings, let me explain how it works. Basically, this is a general reading with a personal touch because you get to choose between these four piles of cards. Now, because it is a general reading, you will need to apply it to yourself, you need to pick and choose what works for you and translate it in your inner language. Please remember that you always have free will and that you always decide what feels right for you. The structure of this reading is as follows. We will have a main tarot card which will give us the supporting message and then we'll have additional oracle cards to see a few more details of this message. We'll have two couples of oracle cards and then we will answer other questions. We will see how we can apply this message so you will get the most benefit out of it. We will see in which areas of your life this message applies best. Then we will see what you will help heal in your life if you start applying this message and we will end the reading with an affirmation. Take a breath, come back to yourself, feel your body, feel the peace inside of it. With the question in your mind, pick the pile which is the most attractive to you. This is pile 1, this is pile 2, this is pile 3 and this is pile 4. If you chose pile 1, and the lapis lazuli stone, then this will be a reading. The supportive message to guide you through the year 2022 is given by the Five of Wands, along with keys on trees, and under my umbrella. gonna see what uh, the energy of the group has to say for us and the cards themselves and then we're gonna make the supportive message as energy I feel tired exhausted I feel pressured I feel so much anger and pain and I don't feel a way to express them. Why do I need to do this? Why do I need to keep fighting? I just do not want it anymore. I am tired. I am so exhausted of all of these discussions and all of the things that I need to do. I feel that I need to justify everything that I do for, for other people. Why? Why so many questions from other people now? Why am I put under so much pressure? I can't take this anymore. <sighs> I, I'm feeling so much pressure from around, uh, from my exterior to change. I'm not comfortable with this. I'm just not comfortable with the changes and with what is going on in my in my vicinity or in my town with other people I, I, I'm finding a real tough time to fit in I'm just not so uh, desiring to please others anymore I cannot do it anymore it's just so exhausting to just be like others to just um, follow some guidelines I feel like I, that 
I am just losing myself in this battle and I'm really not wanting to participate anymore. But what I can do, it's like I'm just, um, I started to be in this game and now I need to finish it. But I'm tired, I'm exhausted and I don't see this game finishing any soon. So, how can I get out of it? I'm struggling and I'm struggling to get ahead in life and to find a way to keep up with the changes and also to find my way through all of these changes and um, to actually support my family. I'm finding it challenging to support my family and myself through all of this and to be tough or to show that I am in control. I somehow want to give up. I want this to be to, to end. I want this to stop. So I'm feeling this uh, intense moment of challenge for the for the next year. This moment of intense, intense challenge that will move you from your comfortable places or that will just rattle you and push you to change and you are already almost tired of it you don't know how to go along again and some of you are struggling, really struggling in your lives right now And there is also a loss of hope, a loss of hope that the battle will just never end, a loss of, um, of vision for the future, a desire to really give up and give in, <sighs> and a lot of pressure. So, let's get into the supportive message right now. This challenge will not break you. These battles will not best you. These are just a few battles. You can go through them. And you have enough energy to go through them. The energy is actually now being accumulated inside of you and every small step that you take through this battle will give you more energy but will also take away from you energy and this is how you will guide yourself through the challenges when you feel that you do not have any more energy to go into that direction, then stop. Stop and uh, find a way to be at peace with yourself because you cannot fight in that direction anymore. That is just, uh, just your soul telling you, hey, we do not need to waste the energy in, that, in this direction. We do not need to go again through this resistance. I have another way for you. If you just give up the fight in this direction. So those moments of exhaustion will actually guide you. Will tell you where not to imply in your energy anymore. And will help you redirect your energy towards more useful directions. So remember then whenever you are tired not to battle with this, uh, this state anymore. Just come back to yourself, sit there with yourself, take a break, understand that you cannot go on like this, that you need to change the, your approach, your vision or your direction. And this way you will also recuperate energy since you are not going to 
go forward in those directions that take energy from you. You will recuperate energy and this will help you see another way. This will help you solve things in the next year. Even if it is very difficult, do not give up. You can give in to yourself, to your soul, but do not give up on yourself. Do not give up to look for solutions, to look for directions. Even if there is such a difficult time and such a difficult challenge outside of you, in your environment, in the group or in your career, remember that uh, this is just a battle of many and you will get out of it stronger. Even if these words feel nothing right now, you will remember them at difficult times and it, they will get you going. And they will remember you not to struggle in uh, directions that do not work anymore. You do not need to prove to anyone who you are, but to yourself. So get back to yourself and reorganize your direction. Even if we are in a great storm, even if outside is raging, storming, throwing rocks, we can still have a place of safety, a heaven in our own home, if we make it so. So, we can just stay in our home, in our safe place, and let the storm rage outside. And this is exactly what your soul, your spirit are telling you. You do not need to fight the storm. Let the storm rage all it wants. Do not go out and try to change it. Go inside this time. Stay in your safe place and redirect your energy to what you can do because you cannot control the storm. And if you keep fighting in this useless directions, you will exhaust yourself even more. And you may also lose, lose touch with the, the important people in your life. Because you are so drawn to this storm outside of you, that you do not see that the people which are near you, your family, your loved ones need you. They need you right now more than everything. So direct your energy towards the people who actually need you, towards the people who value you, towards the people that love you and stay there with them in this heaven. You can uh, even dance, you can have a joyous place, you can have a party in that safe place, even if the storm is raging outside. So leave the storm alone. Direct your energy to what is useful. You will be supported and you will feel so supported and at peace by not fighting the useless fights. And this is also um, relevant for fighting with other people. You do not need to convince other people of your position, of your ideas. You do not need to engage in long discussions which drain your energy and give you nothing. You do not need to fight with everyone for just a piece of um, validation or appreciation. You do not need to show everyone that you, you love them or that you appreciate them, that you, you are so, um, that you are close to them or anything. It's a time when you need to get back to yourself and to the people that you love and need you. And uh, this re-engagement of 
energy will actually give you so much satisfaction and so much connection with yourself that you will just not need anymore to fight with the storm or with other people. You will just feel at home with yourself and satisfied and joyous with the life that you have. Let's see the other cards. Keys on trees. This is... <laughs> Look at this elephant. How did you get there? <laughs> this is really impossible and complicated. How did you get there? And so, so many keys. And it's really difficult to get them. This is telling me that you're complicating yourself too much. Then there, there are um, solutions which are much easier to take. Like I was discussing earlier with the storm. It's just impossible to, to change or control a storm. And this feels like that. You're trying to find impossible solutions. And you're convincing yourself that this is what you need to do. And uh, this is the solutions. These are the solutions. But it's not so. So simplify yourself. And uh, maybe you don't need to solve all of the things. You don't need to know everything about the storm in order to let it be and to let it pass. You really do not need to analyze everything about the storm and what the storm has to do with you in order for you to find peace. So in the, in the next year, please know that you do not need to solve everything for everyone and that you do not need to find the solutions for um, every single wrong thing that you see in your life or in the life of others and that you do not need to be right all of the time and find the answers because maybe in these discussions and in these fights people are asking you for answers that, that you don't know and they don't know either and many people do not know and maybe there are those answers and those questions are not even relevant and they're just keeping you busy making you lose time and energy into a fight that has no meaning so also choose the questions that you answer choose the discussions that you implicate yourself in you do not need to answer everyone and you do not need to demonstrate anything to anyone and you do not need to solve every little problem just let that let the storm go don't don't try to fix it or solve it it's just something like uh, like this elephant here <laughs> impossible and useless let's just take the other under my umbrella and here we have also another strange picture another impossible thing look at this guy <laughs> he's he's sitting on this red bird trying to save the red bird from the rain oh come on <laughs> now the the bird is fine with the rain <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying to help it? Look at this guy. I mean, he's not even properly dressed and he's sitting here in the rain. He's doing worse than the bird. Why is he helping the bird? He should help himself. So, um, this is telling us you shouldn't try to solve everything for everyone. And maybe... Those people don't even need you to save them or to help them or to give them answers. They are just trying to do something like this bird, trying to uh, help you see that um, you are not helpless and that they are not helpless. That each of us have 
our own responsibility and uh, that we shouldn't diminish people and their qualities or their ability to adapt to change. And we shouldn't go on struggling, trying to, to help people who, who do not need our help or who are not even at risk. Because we might also hurt, hurt ourselves while doing this. And it's an awkward position. It, <laughs> it's just not needed. It's so complicated to do this. Why? I, I can understand that uh, he is just um, trying to help. But is he really helping? Not really, right? He's just uh, trying to make face. So you don't need to demonstrate all people that you can help them or that you are worthy uh, or that you are such a good person. This is also exhausting you. Engage with those people who actually need you and who are actually your friends. Redirect your energy to the people that uh, you love and let everyone else do the same. And this will help everyone. If we direct our energy to the people that we love, we start to connect with ourselves in a loving manner, manner and with others as well. And we just leave the world to fix itself by doing this, by doing this redirection of energy from, from the fighting to the loving and uh, we trust that other people will take care of themselves and that they have the skill to do to do that that we do not need to convince them or give them the keys or do so much that uh, we waste our own energy and that we put ourselves in awkward positions so be sure to, to take care of yourself and your loved ones. It's okay to do that. You do not need to go and uh, go beyond yourself and your limits to, to prove something. It, it is okay to stop from, uh, from this uh, from the way you are using your energy and exhausting yourself. Okay, let's add a few more. And we have, we have <laughs> polarity, a charged atmosphere and consequence. Indiscretions progeny. Indiscretion brings some uh, consequences and polar polarity creates a charged atmosphere and I was talking about these um, these tensions and now I'm getting the word insult so they you may throw words at uh, at other people and maybe other people with will throw words that are not uh, that nice at you and it will create such a charged atmosphere throwing around energy from one to the other and back again it gets so so exhausting to just throw around energy like throwing around punches at people and creating so much um, polarity and separation is it that needed I mean, we can see the polarity, we can understand that other people have other opinions and choices than us and we can live with them. We do not need to create um, consequences that will later haunt us because of the way we behave. So it is okay to have different opinions than other people. You need to permit yourself 
to have different opinions than other people and accept that yes, this may bring consequences to you, but you will find that being loyal to yourself it's much more uh, fulfilling and important than being loyal to everyone else and uh, it will also bring a way to break this polarity because if you if you accept that you have a different opinion from other people then you will be also willing to accept the different opinions of others and you will withdraw yourself from uh, from discussions that have no end you will not be willing to continue and try to convince others of um, what what you think and you will not bring harmful consequences to yourself These two cards are speaking to me like this. It is okay not to tell everyone what you're doing and what you're thinking and to demonstrate them your opinions and to convince them and to show them proof and to do all the due diligence and the investigations for them. You do not need to be indiscreet to yourself and to show everything that you have in your mind or in your intention. You can keep things to yourself. And um, this will, will, uh, will silence this polarity, will help, will help you also agree to disagree and also accept that other people may, uh, may just keep things from you for the same reason, just not to, because it's not needed always to show everything. And peace, many times, it's, it's more useful than just uh, creating a really big fire because of, uh, of our differences. So it is okay to be different and it is okay to keep this difference for you for, for a while and to, to choose what you show to other people and what you show to those people for which you have um, deep feelings of love and communion. It tells you that it is okay not to demonstrate who you are to everyone. That it's more important to accept yourself as you are. To accept that uh, this polarity exists and to get out of uh, the fighting. Not to fight with the polarity. Polarity is there to help us to help us have these differences. So when you start fighting with polarity, it's like you are fighting with the storm. You're not gonna win this fight. And this is why it is useless. But if you accept polarity and difference, then there is another discussion. So for this to happen, accept your differences. Accept how you are different from other people and let others be different from you. Now we are going to bring the oracle card and uh, answer a few more questions. So this will answer the question. Uh, what question was it? How can we apply this gift so we can take the best advantage out of it? And we have wisdom in play. Our intuition knows more than we do. 
So by this card we see that there is wisdom at play here, in the storm, in what is happening, and you may not know everything, but your intuition does. Your intuition knows that this storm has a meaning and that you will see it, but maybe not now, maybe not in the next year. But your intuition is guiding you and will guide you through this storm. And it's telling you that yes, there are so many hidden things and maybe they are complicated, but you do not need to waste your time and uh, find all of the answers now. Believe in your intuition that you will be guided at the moment that is appropriate to those answers. And um, this, this idea with the complications, here in these battles you do not need to complicate yourself. There are simple answers that you can use and as I said with the idea with the storm, it is a much simpler resolution to this, uh, to this challenge. You can just stay in your house, you can find and redirect your energy to those things that are really important and uh, do not fight with this uh, to find a solution. You do not need to fight to find a solution because it's not as complicated as you would think and you do not need to find those, those complicated things and, uh, and solutions. And now, in which area of life is this message applied? Of course, it is in all areas, but in these two areas, it's more important. And we have structure and relationships. So I have talked about relationships in the messages that I've given before. And the uh, structure, Saturn, this is telling me that uh, it will also be applied to your career and to the... Um, to the connections that you have with society, with governments, with the structures in your life and with authority. So I'm also getting that in the case of authority, if you are fighting with an, with an authority in your life, this is not a fight that uh, it's, it's useful for you, that you will need to find another way and that other way is not what you think, it's not that complicated and people in your life which are close to you will help you, will help you find the other way, a way which you may not be seeing right now because it's uh, not that obvious if you concentrate yourself uh, to fight things which you cannot change. And um, he, this solution will appear when you start stop, <laughs> when you start to stop, when you will stop from this fight and redirect your energy. So this message will be most useful in relationships in your life and in relationships that has to do have to do with authority and that will also be your uh, place of work and your boss and uh, maybe your co-workers all of the people that influence you in uh, in this area of authority and also your parents for example and now we have the last one and this is stripping illusions and this is telling us about what you will heal if you receive this message and you apply it and we have stripping illusions this means that you will start to strip illusions around your relationships 
and around the authority. So uh, by understanding how to implicate your energy in which relationships and in which battles, in which discussions, in which conflicts, you will guide yourself to better understand your relationships with society, with the, the, um, the rules of society, with your uh, the rules of your town, of your group, and also your relationships in general and your relationships with um, your boss, with the people at your work. You will be living and letting go of illusions around all of these, uh, these relationships. Because maybe you, you thought you need to fight a lot more than it is needed. And you may have had um, a lot of illusions about the intentions of the other people or about the intentions of the authority in your town or in your country. So you will be letting go some of the of those illusions and this will help you have better relationships in your life in uh, at your workplace and also with um, authority with governments or with uh, other people who hold authority in your life. We will end this with a healing affirmation. Healing heartbreak. So we have this affirmation about relationships because we see this area is really important for you. And it says, my heart will love again. My heart will love again. So when you redirect your energy from the conflicts, from the fight, from trying to control things, from thinking others control you in uh, some way or form, you will redirect your energy towards the people that actually love you, that actually matter in your life, and you will start seeing that you can share love again, that your heart can open again, and through these uh, relationships of love, you will start to see this whole situation in another way. And you will start to heal the illusions you have around this whole challenge. So these are all of the messages for you. May you find peace in the middle of the storm. If you like this, Please don't forget to subscribe, if you haven't done this already, to click the like button and to come back again for another reading soon. See you soon! If you chose part 2 and the rose quartz crystal, then this will be your reading. The supportive message that will guide you in the year 2022 is given by by the queen of swords along with butterfly garden and and the gardener <laughs> the butterfly garden and the gardener okay we will hear the energy and the cards and then we will make the supportive message I know so much about many things and it's still not enough I'm in such attention to perform and to control my life I feel that everything is going on behind me like there are so many hidden things that I do not know and that I wish to know. I want to be like a butterfly to just fly around and see things from above and go into places when, uh, where I cannot go right now. I want to strive to use my uh, 
my spiritual skills, my psychic skills, to find out whatever is going on. I cannot stay without knowing. I'm so, I'm so thirsty for knowledge. And I find that my feelings are not giving me a break. I find it hard to understand what I'm feeling right now. And I am so, so drawn into so many places. I wish I, I would travel. I wish I would do something else, maybe. I feel like moving, but I'm not sure of the, of the direction. And then looking down, I'm looking down of all to all of the other people and life and trying to figure out where I fit and where can I uh, engage in, uh, in action. I wish to help and I wish to direct energy and action and life and uh, things around me. I am uh, really desiring to implicate myself in running things and in given other and to give a direction to other people in how things work. I am very settled in my intentions. I know what I want, but I am feeling in such a like closed in a box. I want to get out of it and see what's outside. I want to reach higher, to reach higher, to reach higher to the, to the divine real. I'm kind of tired of this life and how much I need to do here. I wish I could influence more, direct more and apply myself more. So this doesn't need to apply to all of you in the same manner. You can all find the appropriate manner and language and meaning in order to apply the message. Because the message for you is not always in plain sight. For each of the piles, the message for you is hidden in the words, in the meanings behind the words. And it's also, um, it's always a collaboration between, between what I say and what you can understand and how you can apply it. You do not only take the message and as is, literally. I'm, I'm finding this need to say this here because you may also, some of you, take things literally in your life. And people, and we, most of the time, do not speak in um, such a clear, objective way. We do not have the same definitions. We do not use language in the same way. We have our own language and way of expression. And when we take things literally, and people literally, most of the time we may not understand what they actually say and we may uh, suppose things, we may speculate, we may think we understand, well, but we actually, maybe we don't understand, maybe we do not um, go deeply enough to find the real message. So the supportive message for you, you do not need to go as deep and you do not need to know and control everything in your life. You, you can let life lead you in, in a certain way. You can surrender to life and you can trust life to guide you. You do not need to guide and direct everything and apply control to everything in your life, including in the way you express in the way you wish to be understood and in the way you understand things from other people and from their actions. You do not need to analyze everything. And this may not, mean a, um, may not sound like a supportive message, but this is a supportive message in order for you to actually surrender to the divine, 
because this is what you're looking for inside uh, deep inside of you to reach that uh, higher knowledge and wisdom and uh, without this surrender to to life it will be really difficult and complicated and um, you will get somehow some part of you to hate yourself at one point and think you cannot make it and think it's so complicated and that you need to know more and that you need to reach more and that you need to make so many things but it's not knowledge that you need more not uh, we do not need to know everything every time about everything if we do not have the wisdom to understand it to apply it and to actually use it and it's not useful to us why do we need to hold so much information it's not about information power and control does not um, do not come when we have more information although it appears so it's when we have wisdom that we complete ourselves and we really feel inner authority it's not control who gives us that inner authority it's the reach for wisdom and the connection to wisdom so this is why the supportive message is to permit yourself and to know that it is okay not to to go for information to reach for information so much that it is okay to not know that is the main the main supportive message it is okay for you to not know it is really okay it's it's not a fault it's not your fault and it's not something that you need to punish yourself for it is okay to not know everything and not it is okay not to control everything around you your body your feelings your emotions it is okay to be chaotic at times to let yourself go i feel that so much restraint in this in this pile so so much contraction so much keeping things under check checking verifying measuring everything so it will be in order wanting so much order and higher order looking for how you can make that happen it is okay to have moments of chaos to let yourself go and feel it is okay to open up and surrender to life it is okay to trust life this is how you will connect to that wisdom that you seek it is okay to let go of the search it is okay to let your mind go it will expand it will not go crazy <laughs> it will not go crazy it will not go insane it will expand and it will be capable of more exactly what you want but you need to permit yourself and feel okay with this um, loss of control because your mind wishes to expand but this need for order for um, for having things uh, verified and checked keeps you in the same box you want to go outside but you need to permit yourself to feel chaos because when you break a box it, it's a mess you're gonna make a mess <laughs> and uh, if you do not accept the mess you cannot get out of the box so accept the chaos be okay with it it is okay to go a little crazy sometimes you will not be insane like you think I, mean, I feel that some of you think that if you let yourself go you will find yourself in um, in a crazy situations everything will go right 
everything will be wrong, everything will be such a nightmare in your life. But it's not so. It will not be that bad. It just will not be that bad. It is also advisable that you that you look at this desire of your ego to reach, to always find these loopholes in which you think that you're reaching the higher realms, but you're actually there in that box because this um, this order and uh, the desire to search needs to stop in order to expand. So um, another message for you is that your ego is not your boss. Your ego is not your boss. It does not boss you around and tell you what to do. You can let it go. You can let it scream in your head, but we need order, but we need to do this and the, we need to find out this and the other. You can let it scream all it wants. Your ego is the one who will go insane. Not you. That part of you, which is your consciousness, which is your core self, it will not go insane. It will be there if you permit it to be. Through this uh, moment of chaos where your ego might just go <laughs> crazy because you're breaking the box, because you're not letting him rule you, and it will be such a moment of liberation and happiness and joy. I'm also hearing protection, because some of you feel that if you let this go, this need for search and uh, this need for verification, you will, um, you will not be protected anymore. You feel that this protects you from the bad things that can happen. You feel that you are not protected enough, that you need more protection still, that you need to punish that part of you which doesn't uh, want more protection. The supportive message in this case is that it is okay to be vulnerable, to be vulnerable. <laughs> it, I can even, I can't even say the word. This is how how thick that protection is. It is okay to let yourself go into a state of love. It is okay to trust your feelings and to let them be. It is okay not to protect yourself when you are with uh, loved ones, when you are in a safe environment. And you need to know that you are protected enough. You are controlling enough. You have a choice and you will have more choices if you let the, this protection go. If you understand that your ego is not protecting you in all cases, that your ego is not useful to protect you in all cases and to control your life, that you will find new options and, and new choices and that you can always have a choice. This is another message, a supportive message for you again. You have a choice even when you do not know you have one. Even when you think there is no choice, you have one. You may also disconsider the choice that you are making, thinking, this is not me, this is not something that I will do, this is not something that I want to do, but I have to. But the thing is, you are choosing that because you think it's the, best, it's the best solution for you at that moment. But you do not want to see this. 
you think you are betraying yourself and you think that option and that choice will trap you in it forever it is not so you can make another choice this is just to get you going on the road of another choice you are making the best that you can right now remember this you are always making your best choice you are thinking about it you are connected and you are a very intelligent individual you are making the best choice do not diminish yourself do not betray yourself thinking you are punishing yourself by doing this choice this is the best that you can master right now. Accept that. Accept that you see no other choice right now but this one. And when you do that, remember it is not the last choice you will make. Remember that you will make other choices. And do this choice with the intention that you will have a better option and a better choice that you will attract a better solution in the future so don't do it like if i choose that it it is the end it is not the end it it is just a choice you will make it and then you will find another choice and if you think this is the end then it will be the end don't let your ego boss you around. You will find the best solution for you in the future to get out of the thing you might think you are getting yourself in right now. Sometimes we may need to accept the difficult things in our lives in order to find a solution because in that moment we cannot see a solution. But if we accept the moment, the challenge, the difficult things that are happening in our lives and we accept what we must do in that moment, then we open ourselves up to the solution. And even in the hardest moments, you can find a solution if you look for one, if you stay on the lookout, lookout and you are open to find that solution. So never think this is the last choice that you will make. Better choices can come to you if you open up to them. And let's see the, the two oracle cards. And we have the butterfly garden and the gardener. So beautiful. This is telling me also about your mind. We see butterflies here. We have butterflies here. I didn't choose this directly, so I didn't know that <laughs> they will have so many butterflies in it. So um, this is your mind, but also your heart. The balance between your mind and your heart. Because this is what I have been talking about earlier. To actually choose to let your heart step into your to let your mind fall into your heart and to trust this change to trust that it will not lead you astray but it will expand and uh, even clear your mind now i see your mind as this garden here and here we have you enjoying what you have um, planted in your garden and here we have the gardener or you so these two cards are telling me this message that you need to take care of your mind and uh, take care of what you plant in it the ideas that you plant in it the things that you see in it grow and um, that you can always you can always change what you plant in your garden, in your mind. It is not like uh, you would plant things in the earth. 
It is uh, always changing. Your mind can always be changed. So let that um, those things unfold into your mind. You may you may put plant you may plant seeds that um, you don't know what they will bring to you. So you may feel fear to plant those seeds, those ideas in your head. But when they grow, maybe you will actually like what they bring to you. And if you do not, you can always change your mind. So the main supportive message here is again, you can always change your mind. I know that it may feel that it's so difficult to change your mind, but actually we change our minds every single moment. There are trillions, millions, infinite thoughts in our minds every every single day they go around and change and the state the the stable state of our mind is change and if we try to just um, control it and uh, tell it what to do that will be very hard we can of course clear our mind and find a way to pick and choose what to let grow in it. I mean to pick and choose what ideas we incubate in our mind, but we still need to let it change. We still need to let it move and to be okay with that movement and that change. And um, be okay with the movement and the change that you will have and those choices that I was talking about. Because this change in your, in, your, in your mind will bring you new choices and new ideas to plant. Let's bring the other two cards. Oh, and we have activated earth and earth pulsing. We have so many cards about the earth. And this is such... Um, I feel such a spiritual energy from the from the tarot card and such an earthy energy from the oracle cards. There is a contrast between the spiritual side and the, um, the earthly side. You're trying to control the earthly side. You're trying to control your environment, your body, your emotions, your everything in your life or have a saying over it, have a decision over it. And if you, you may not, um, if you don't have a decision over it, you may think you are out of control. But it's not so. Since we cannot actually have 100% control over anything, there is a part of us which we will never control. And if we do not accept this, then we will have a really hard time accepting life. And uh, spiritual people, some of you, I, I, I feel that some of you will have worked a lot on your spirituality and you have obtained a lot in that area. You are um, an elevated soul, you, you have knowledge, but you also need experience. You need a way to understand the information that you, you are reaching to. You need a way to leave that information in order to get wisdom out of it. Otherwise, it will just uh, clutter your mind. It will uh, just stay in there like noise. It will not do anything and um, will bother you a lot because you do not know or control everything in your life. So this is telling me that uh, it is okay, as a supportive message, it is okay to let yourself go and um, come back, come down a little bit from those higher dimensions, from those higher places. Just come down to earth, be more practical and more simple, take care of yourself in simple ways, accept Accept the will of time. Accept that things happen in time in this dimension. 
that um, you may not have everything at once like we can have in our minds that things happen in the, on the earthly plane in a timely manner in cycles and that if we accept these cycles we accept the structure which actually is very stable what is stable is the structure of cycles of life and death of things that follow after another the seasons our bodies the way they work these are stable cycles they change of course but that change is stable those cycles are stable and if we if we accept these cycles then we we will uh, connect a lot more with the divine world a lot more than we actually think so calm down a little bit it's okay it will not make you less spiritual it is okay to calm down and take care of the mundane stuff for a while to leave aside this um, search for information it is okay to tend your garden to tend for your mind and what you plant in it but um, align it with uh, with the earth with the pulses of the earth spend some time in nature and let's let's make a test right now take a second and think about this question will you be willing to let everything go right now for five minutes and go to the nearest park or um, nearest flower or plant or tree and stay there and commune with that plant or that tree for five minutes. Can you do that? Can you leave that spiritual place of yours? But go there and commune with this plant, not in a spiritual way, but feel the plant, look at it grow, understand how simple life it is for that plant. Just look at it. Just commune with it at the level of the earth. Touch it. Feel it. Understand the stability of the plant and its cycles. See the patience it has. <laughs> the patience the plant has to just sit there and do nothing. So it is okay to commune and come back to the earth and feel nurtured by the earth. You do not need to go higher. This is another strong supportive message. You do not need to go so high in order to feel connected. You can come back to the earth. This is how you will find that connection again. You do not need to go and see everything from above. Come back here at the level of the earth and commune and connect with the earth with your body, with the cycles of knowing and not knowing, with the cycles of uh, going deep within or going deep without, um, going without in the exterior, with the cycles of um, control and lack of control and so on. It is okay also to be disconnected for a while from the earth or from the sky, from the divine. It is okay to be disconnected or to find uh, those despair moments, those moments in which you feel lost, because you will find yourself again. It is okay to not know. It is okay not to... Um, it is okay to sleep. It is okay to lose your consciousness for a while. It is okay to let this will go and do its job. It is okay to trust the will, to trust the will of time, to trust that whatever unfolds, it will be for your own growth. Okay, now let's bring the cards to answer another three questions. And we have how to apply this message 
so you will get the the advantages from it and we have emptied the ending and beginning lie at either side of the same door this is so so beautiful and we see this beautiful girl here with a door and the seed and she's sleeping so it is okay to feel these moments of this connection of ending of uh, being empty of being lost of not knowing this is how you will connect more because it is a cycle we go up and then we come down and then we lose ourselves in order to find ourselves again and we get full and then we get empty again and uh, what I'm feeling again in this pile is that you may you may search for a way to get out of this wheel to maybe get out of the wheel of karma get out of the wheel of uh, death and rebirth if you're feeling in that way maybe some of you will do this is a message for you that it is okay to let yourself participate in this wheel of time because this is life so when you want to get out of this wheel where do you want to go do you want to be outside of the wheel how will you live there just think about it and let yourself be absorbed by life let yourself be lived by life let's see in which areas this message will be most appropriate so we have here alliance and solar flares alliance so we have birds here again <laughs> flying again over everything seeing things from above going to the spiritual side and we have the sun and everything around it so this message will be best applied to yourself to yourself to your ego to your structures and the way you relate to yourself the way you relate with life the way the sun relates with everything else and the way you relate with other people around yourself the way you relate with your body and with your mind with your ego with your inner structure inner structures and the alliances you make with yourself and others alliances are connections but are not necessarily direct connections they are also indirect this is what i feel here anyway so this message will help you to a better understand these connections between yourself and life in general and let's see what you will heal by applying the message and we have perception so by applying this message you will heal your perception the way you see yourself in this wheel we have the wheel again this is the yin and yang wheel the way you see yourself in the growth of life you will change this perception and heal illusions that you might have about your connection to the world and your place and your mission and what you need to do in the world and to finish this we will have this um, mantra or uh, affirmation Oh, look at this integrating the ego and it says everything is for me not against me everything works with me not around me or against me or in my exterior so everything works with me this is how I feel to to translate this 
and it will be more appropriate to the message. Everything is with me, works with me. I don't need to feel disconnected. I don't need to feel at odds. I don't need to fix it. I don't need to do so many things and uh, to connect with the divine and with myself. So this is all of the messages for now. May you find a way to connect more by coming down to earth and commune with the earth, with your body, with all of your structures, by finding a way to let your mind fall into your heart. If you like this, please subscribe if you haven't done this already, like the video and I hope I see you again into the next, the next readings. Bye! If you chose pile tree and the cornelian stone, then this is your reading. The supportive message for you is given by the Queen, the Queen of Wands. And along with throne, your potential is endless and feast, slow down and celebrate yourself. This is such a strong energy. I'm actually being like hit directly in the face by how much energy I'm feeling from this pile. You have been so visible. You may also be um, a public figure or someone who is a boss or someone who has um, a team, who's running a team or who is very interested to be at the forefront of things, who likes to be seen, who likes to uh, help other people, be there for other people, be shown like an example, teach other people by example, by what you do, by showing your strength, by showing who you are. <sighs> but at the same time, I feel like an inside anger and words that are not spoken and so much force and I feel like she is trying to be to stand up like a prop she's not actually having a lot of energy to stand up she is propping herself on that uh, on this thing right here she's trying to keep up appearances she's trying to just keep up with the world she's trying to give a good example she's trying to keep up expectations to not let people down to be okay and handle responsibility a lot more responsibility and to just fix or um, just do everything and more that you can to go above and beyond and do everything for everyone and uh, you're, she's trying to just keep herself straight in, in this endless line of doing, of work, of responsibilities and she's so... she's uh, she has like... Um, hidden anger inside that's lurking in there she doesn't know how to to keep doing this anymore but she's doing it she's smiling even though she's hurting she's she's such a force for everyone else if she lets down what are the others going to do If you are a man, this is an energy inside of you.
she starts trying to help everyone but at the same time harming herself. She's afraid. She's so afraid that if she loses it, everything will just go awry, will just not happen. Everything will, will fall apart. She's keeping the whole family. So if you are a parent or a provider for your family, you are trying to keep everything straight, everything in order. order. You are trying to be the one who the others can rely upon. You have these responsibilities that you need to handle. But at the same time, you're stretching yourself thin. You are almost at the end of your power, at the end of what you can do for others. And you still want to do more. You still want to give that amazing example of um, a person who is, who's got everything together, who can figure out, out any, any solution for everyone. You are just so giving. I, I Feel so much generosity from this pile, desire to help others, desire to be there for them, to help them whenever they need to fix their problems or help them. You can also be a counselor or a spiritual guide or someone who is helping others. But you do not need to be. I mean, you can be also... Um, a person who can just has this desire to to express in this way and a very loving parent or a provider for your family and um, she's just about to faint I mean I can I can even feel her just just wanting to just let go to wanting to fall to the ground and to sit there to just hug the ground feel the 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 cold of, um, of the floor and just be one with the floor. So the message for you, we can also see this here. So we can see the, the contrast. These ladies are sitting down, she is trying to sit up and show her strength the supportive message for you is that you can take a seat. You can sit down and still be in control of things. And you can call for help. You don't have to do it all alone. It's just not a time when you can take everything upon yourself and be fine with it. You have your amount of energy, of um, emotional joy and of uh, mental clarity that you can use and you need to take stock you need to accumulate to amplify them but not in a way that um, you you spend so much energy that you do not have for yourself anymore and this uh, in time may also be detrimental to your health so you can, you can take some time off to, to take care of yourself. You can take a seat and just run things from there. You can find a way to, to fulfill yourself. You can find a way to nourish yourself too. While doing this, you are also important. You are very important to the other people. I'm sure that they do not want to exhaust yourself. They do not want you to reach that end of your power. They do not want um, for you to fall. But they will catch you if you need a break. They will help you. They will be understanding with you. You do not need to put up this, this job to, to stand up and do everything for them. You need to have more trust in people. You can trust other people. Maybe they will not do such a good job like you, but you need to help yourself in order to help them and let yourself be helped. Now, when you try to stand up so much 
at one moment when you do not have the energy to stand up it is a moment when um, when arrogance and the hubris can can kick in and tell you hey we can go on like this forever we can help everyone we can be we can take all the responsibilities in the world and we will be fine this is not you the real you talking this is arrogance this is hubris let themselves go let them go you do not need them you do not need to put up a show for everyone smile for everyone be there for everyone you need your space you need your healing space and you need time off so when you find yourself stretched to the max to the max this um, this year remember that you are worth a time off you are worthy of a time off you deserve it you have worked for it and you can claim it you can talk to the people you can tell them hey i'm gonna take a time off for myself they will be more understanding than than you can even think about you can uh, you you have endless potential like it said here but you do not need to to complete it all now you do not need to make everything so fast you can take your time and enjoy you can take your time and feast maybe conjure up a party or some some close friends that you can just enjoy time together remember and i can see only women here so maybe gather up with, with your friends and uh, ask for help maybe ask for help in what you're doing to other people around you that maybe do similar things ask them to replace you for a while or to just help you to in a certain manner to keep up uh, your business while you take while you take a vacation or a break i'm also finding it that life may be so hard to believe sometimes and so hard to keep up what other people need of you you strive to give others what they need but you also need to find those moments in which you strive to give yourself the same attention you give to other people and to celebrate yourself and what you're doing for other people maybe even um, schedule up time time with your friends or time with uh, people you love so you can have it in your schedule so you can have it there and you do not um, find other things to do if it's in your schedule it's something that it is in your mind in your plan it's part of your plan and it's easier because i feel that that some of you need this plan some of you need to have it all figured out and uh, no surprises no no things that are unexpected so um yeah just uh, just take some time off permit yourself and uh, when I am speaking about this, I feel such resistance. Like, why? We need to do this. We need to help people. They need us so much. Yes. But you, you, those people can find help somewhere else too. That may sound, uh, that may sound strange, right? But those people will find help, even if you do not help them. This, this is also about some arrogance here. You do not need to help everyone. They will get help if they actually need it. They will handle themselves. You do not need to do things for them. So some of you 
have this tendency to do things for other people. The supportive message is that those responsibilities, if you do responsibilities for other people, they will not fulfill you because they are for other people and those other people need to do it themselves. They will actually enhance this ego. They will enhance this part of you and the dependence with the other people. So you can let this go, really. You do not have to, to appear as an example for everyone. You can take a break from that. And you can hold yourself with um, so much love and consideration. I still feel that uh, this is not possible for some of you. That you may think that I'm so busy that I, I can't even find uh, the time. Or that um, I cannot afford it. I, I truly cannot afford those moments when I, when I let down. I cannot accept letting down other people. But the thing is, you are not letting down other people. You are letting down yourself. Because you cannot take it anymore. Your body, your mind, they need a break. So uh, if you keep doing this, you are actually letting yourself down. And you are not taking your own responsibilities. It is safe to let others handle their own responsibilities. Some of you think that you have uh, a lot more responsibility than you actually have. Sometimes we may think that it's in our responsibility to do some things for other people, but it's actually their responsibility to take care of themselves. But this is a, a, vicious, a vicious cycle because if you do not let yourself um, taken care of, if you do not take care of yourself, if you do not let other people take care of you and so on, then you will not let other people um, do their own work, have their own responsibility and their own power. I feel there is also um, a desire to have power here, even if it may be unconscious. Some of you know about this, of course. This desire to remain in power, to stay there, because you have power, of course, but you do not need to step onto the other people's power. Because taking responsibility for yourself gives power back to you. And when you let other people be responsible for themselves, you give power back to them and it is okay to trust them and to give them power to give them chances to grow it is okay to take care of yourself while other people take care of them it is okay to feel um, not needed for a while and to step out of being visible it is okay to feel hidden it is okay to have moments for yourself, to be intimate with yourself, to take care of your pleasures. It is okay to feel pleasure in life. It's not everything about, about the responsibility. I feel that maybe some of you are, just, are too serious about life. You take life such, um, with so much seriousness. Seriously, life is not that serious. You need to take, uh, to take some time to enjoy it. Otherwise, it will lose its luster. It will lose that value that life has. If you do not enjoy enough your life, then at some moment this, uh, this pleasure, this displeasure that you have inside of you will mount up to so much 
so much anger, so much wrath, so many things that you have not responded or satisfied, so many pleasures that are there, but you did not um, acknowledge them. And it will come with a regret. So take your time. It's okay to celebrate yourself. It's okay to feel pleasure, to feel joy. It's okay to feel joy even if others do not feel joy, even if others are in pain. It is okay to feel joy if, even if others uh, do not find solutions and are in despair. Because you will not help them if you are so serious, if you take things so much to heart, if you um, do not get out of the of the despair game, of the fear game, and you believe everything in in this uh, in life in general. Not everything is worth believing. <laughs> Not everything is worth taking seriously. So uh, make up a feast with your friends. Let yourself be helped. Change up a little bit your um, your routine, the way you do your work. So it contains more pleasure and uh, more moments for yourself. <laughs> it's okay to take those moments for you. And it's okay for life to be full of joy. Do not feel guilty that other people do not have the same joy. You will not help them if you lose your joy. Let's, let's take some of the other cards. So we will have... Two goddesses, Epona, wise leadership, and Ishtar, communion. So we see these amazing, amazing goddesses and this feminine power, and we have all women here. <sighs> this is such a strong feminine power, but the, uh, this is the active woman. The, that, woman, that woman which is a, a leader, she knows what she wants and how to get it. She doesn't need everyone else. But this is the thing and this is the message here. At one, at one moment you will realize you cannot do everything yourself. You cannot do everything by yourself alone and you cannot have everything done for yourself and this is a, like a slave master routine that you need to understand so um, you do not need to be a slave to your work or to other people and also you do not need to have the responsibility of a master over other people wise leadership tells us about this about this um, this tension between master and slave and uh, wise leadership supposes that you understand your role in your life that you understand when to apply your power and when it is not needed to apply your power and it is mostly needed to let other people have their own power a wise leader supports its people to have power. A wise leader empowers their own people to do their own work. And um, a wise leader encourages others every time to reach for their own power. And it doesn't do everything for everyone. It doesn't take responsibility away from the people. No, a wise leader helps the people have their own responsibility so they have a certain autonomy and they can choose for themselves. A wise leader supports people's, people's choice and um, helps them see their, uh, a, a better vision, guides them, but that does not impose on them and does not want to take everything from themselves like responsibility 
communion Ishtar. She tells us that you, you need to commune with nature, with yourself, with everything there is. So you can understand that, that in nature everything is in balance and uh, every, uh, everyone has its own responsibility and they work in communion, in collaboration, they uh, do not hurt each other and they do not exhaust each other, they do not become harmful in, um, in the way they use energy between them. So it is okay to have your own energy and let other people have their own energy. It is okay to feel pleasure. It is okay to feel joy. It is okay to feel joy and to feel protected in the storm, to feel that um, you are different from others. It is okay to, f to find a way to sit yourself and not stand up for everyone, not fight for everyone, not take this responsibility to be a savior or a warrior for other people, but um, find a way to use this wisdom, to draw wisdom out of the way you use your power and to commune with everyone and understand that they are not powerless and that they have their own power and their own choices and you can let go of being that example of standing up of, of fighting of being a warrior of taking up so much responsibility you can sit yourself and feel pleasure now i'm going to bring up these oracle cards and we're gonna answer three questions so the first one is how to apply the gift in order to take advantage of it fully and we have assistance with access and it says it is necessary to ask for and accept help in order to receive it so here we have this message that um, assistance with access, that you need assistance to have access to something. So if you need to, for example, learn something new, access some wisdom, or have more access to yourself and understand yourself more, or have... Um, access to more means to do something this message is here to tell you that you will need to ask for help like uh, the help will not actually come to you if you do not ask and that you have you need to have this courage to let yourself be vulnerable or to accept that you need help yes because here we see that uh, this pile most of you do not accept help easily or you may disconsider help maybe you think that you cannot um, find a person to help you or you diminish other person so i feel this for some of you you may diminish other person's help you may think you can you are the only one to help yourself or that um, other people will just um, let's say complicate more what you have to do or maybe it is just um, not easy to help yourself that is just the main the main idea here that it, it is not easy to help yourself as we have seen and um, you really need to ask to voice this desire to help go to the other people speak to them ask for help with your voice not necessarily with your action the other people because you are such a such a strong person such a powerful person they may not even think that you need help that they may not even understand that you uh, have 
uh, a need for assistance. So this is why you really need to voice this. You, uh, you need to, to, to make yourself courage. It, it's really hard for me to speak right now <laughs> because uh, uh, there is resistance to asking help. So accept help, even if that help may not appear to be what you need at first. Just be open, because life will bring people in your life that will, uh, will just assist you with this. And they may not give you what you think you need, because maybe you don't know what you need exactly. And this is why you need assistance to access more of yourself, more of life in general, and more joy. Let's see in which areas this message is more appropriate. Oh, when we have home and heart. This is about the same thing. <laughs> So this is best applied to yourself, to the way you run your home. So if you are a provider in your home, in the way you run your family, your close family and your extended family, and the way you organize your house, and the way you organize your life in general, because this is the fire in your life. So the fire that's at the center of yourself and also at the center of your home, that's that safety place. And your friends and your family and your extended family and the, the people that uh, admire you. These all take part in, uh, in this place that you will call home, that you will call um, where you shine, the place where you shine, where, where you stand in the middle and you influence everything. So this is about yourself, it is an intimate message, it is very close to you and about your life in general and your home and the way you organize yourself. And some of you may have a connection between your work and your home. Your work may be done at home or you may do, you may um, have this, um, this connection. You're either um, working alone at home or working with a few people or having a place where you work with other people that uh, you feel like home. So it's also about about your uh, your career. And now let's see the last one. What you will heal if you apply this message? And we have here letting go. And we have talked about this. So by applying this message, you will learn to let go. To let go of so much uh, pressure, of so much um, hardness on, your, on yourself, of so many responsibilities. To let go and um, not be so serious in your life, and not be so um, ingrained in uh, your, worth, your worth as being connected with what you do. And uh, let go and feel some fun in your life. Feel some pleasure for what you're doing, despite everything that's happening in your exterior. It is a, about your interior, about your home, your heart. So let go of what's happening outside. You can have joy even if outside is a raging volcano. You can learn to live in really difficult situations and still have joy for what you're living, still have time for yourself and admire and appreciate yourself. Now we end with an affirmation and it's about inviting ecstasy. 
I am worthy of all of the pleasure my heart desires. I am worthy of all of the pleasure my heart desires. So permit yourself, it is okay, it is okay to permit yourself some pleasure. Any kind of pleasure, I find to, <laughs> to mention that right now. So these are all of the um, messages for you. May you find this courage to invite pleasure into your life, to invite joy and to let go of the things that do not serve you. If you like this video, you are invited to like, to subscribe if you haven't done this already and I hope I see you next time in the next reading. Bye! If you chose pile 4 and the hematite, then this will be your reading. The supportive message for you is given by the moon along with lullaby and 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 change of seasons. So first we're gonna hear the cards and we're gonna make the message, the supportive message afterwards. And of course, we're gonna make several messages along along the reading. So first, let's hear the moon. I'm feeling a really heavy energy here. Upon my head and upon my eyes and in my in my feet. I'm dragging my feet along. And like my eyes cannot see that well. Everything is foggy, everything is so diminished. Like things do not have color anymore in my life. Like everything is so bad or so dark. Like I'm looking around and I do not see any joy. I'm looking around and I'm trying to to find a reason to go further and to find a reason to interact with other people. I feel that everything has changed and everything has changed in uh, such a way that I do not feel secure anymore. I feel things have been taken from me. So some of you, maybe you have lost someone dear, or maybe you have lost like um, your way of living, or the house, or the place you were living in, or this areas of life have changed a lot so much that uh, they have brought sadness they have brought pain they have brought upheaval into your life but i also feel a peace with this it's like i'm i'm moving i have let go of of holding on to how life should be and I have let go of so many things it's like I'm so different than before that I don't even see myself that clearly but I feel so much joy because I'm doing all of this. At the same time, I'm feeling liberated and so, so free to do things that I thought I couldn't do before. There's such a paradox here. So much love. I feel that this change has has brought so much love or, or an opening towards love 
an opening to seeing people in another way. So the supportive message here is that darkness is not forever. Even the darkest of the darknesses, even the darkest road that you can imagine, even the, the worst nightmare, it will end. It will end. Everything ends. And this is a blessing. Remember that you will change. Everything will change in your life, including your body, including the people around you, the place you work. Everything will change. But there is a part in you that will not, that will seem it doesn't change. But it actually goes with the change. It is not influenced in the way that you think. Even if everything it changes, you grow. You grow into something else. You change too. But you do not lose who you are, even if you are asleep. Even if, because of the pain, because of the traumas, because of what's happening, you have decided to go to sleep a little bit, to just rest, to not try to be awake anymore, to not try to reach the divine anymore, to not try to be spiritual anymore. You just gave in to life. And this has brought you another way of living. Now, I'm speaking in the future, <laughs> but as it is in the present, so it can be confusing. So it is okay to also close your heart for a while. It is okay to feel sad and lose yourself for a while. It is okay, everything that's happening to you. You're not less spiritual if you go to sleep for a while. You need rest. And rest will replenish your energy, your soul and your awareness. And you will wake up with more awareness, more energy, more understanding. So it is okay to let go for a while. Do not strive to, for example, increase your intuition, be spiritual, uh, do all sorts of things. It is okay to let yourself be driven by the unconscious, by the, by the collective subconscious and unconscious. It is okay, it's not, it's not a punishment. It is not a, something that will diminish you. I feel that some of you, you may be um, blamed that you are not reacting in the way that you are supposed to be reacting in the mind, in the view of some people. And that uh, you do not have the energy and you do not have the... Um, the desire to, to respond in that way. And they may accuse you for going along with things you shouldn't be going along with, or for uh, being asleep, or for not knowing things, or for whatever in the earth, in the sky you can think about, for not going on the right road, for making mistakes, for um, believing the wrong things, for not knowing the truth, for not seeing the truth, for anything that you can think about. It is okay to wander, to get lost. And it is okay to be driven by the forces of the unconscious, 
because the forces of the unconscious are part of ourself, are part of who we are, and they are safe, they contain love, and they drive us safely to where we need to be in order to wake up again. It's like, it's like when you go to sleep at night. You trust the sleep. How about if you do not trust to sleep? How would that be? You would just be uh, up all night doing things, being very afraid to sleep. Is that, is that really a, a way to live? Not to go to sleep anymore? Not to permit yourself to rest and to replenish from the unconscious, from the, the waves of spirit, from um, the higher consciousness. It is okay, this is where you're going if you permit yourself to be asleep. You do not need to hear everyone else and uh, believe them. You do not need to believe everything. Not everything is as you see them. Not everything is as they see them. We do not see in the unconscious. We can perceive. We can understand. We can read. We can have a connection. But not all of us are awake at the same time. And not all of us will be awake through sleep. So some of us can be lucid dreaming, but not every time, not all of the time. It is okay to understand where you are and to feel trust that you will be driven where you need to be and to understand your level of, of consciousness and to, to accept it and to not need to be like others. And to accept the sleep. I feel that some of you are, are struggling with this. To accept that there are periods, cycles that come and go when uh, many people go to sleep. And you may go to sleep as well. You may be one that blames others for for being asleep or maybe you are just angry or you just don't understand why or you just uh, feel that you're being left alone in this while others go to sleep or, or you may not let yourself understand that you need to go to sleep also and it's okay it's really okay I'm here to tell you it's really okay and you do not need to blame the other people or be upset about them or about yourself and what you need. We will all be driven by these waves of consciousness and we will all awaken in the right time. We do not need to force ourselves and we cannot accept to sleep and we have here lullaby so, <laughs> some of us, we hear this song of sleep, of going to sleep from the, from the waves of the consciousness, of the collective consciousness, which rocks ourselves to sleep and tells us, hey, you need to sleep for a while, we're gonna take care of you, you are in good hands, you can trust us, you can go to sleep, it's okay. It's not going to be forever. And you can dream whatever you want. I mean, you can make it a nightmare if you want to, but you can also make it heaven. So, your dream can be whatever you want. So, this is uh, the blessing that you get when you accept the sleep and you understand the other people who go to sleep. Hey, you can make your dream whatever you want. And the other people, if you're one that stays awake in the dream, like, like uh, when you're lucid in a, in a dream, then you will know that you cannot always change everything around yourself, even if you're lucid in a dream. 
The dream will take you wherever it needs to go. And uh, all the other people do the same. So let them dream. Let yourself dream. It's okay. You really don't need to force yourself so much. To resist to the lullaby. To resist to the sleep, to the rest that you need. You will wake up. You will wake up as the wave will turn and you'll have more energy and more awareness than you have now. You will see that many things will be resolved in the sleep. Many things will be just reordered with the sleep. We know that sleep reorders our mind and how we work and this is how we get to be fresh in the morning and have energy and awareness. So. Um, just uh, accept this moment that we need, that you may need and trust, trust the dream, trust the dream that will take you wherever you need. And we have change of seasons. So this tells, uh, tells me again about these cycles of consciousness. We go to sleep, we come back awake and we go to sleep again and, and so on. And this also helps our body regenerate. After the moment of sleep, we regenerate. We come back again stronger. So if you do not trust the sleep, you will not come back again stronger. You will not let your body regenerate. By this sleep, we we process information which we do not have um, the wisdom, the understanding or the means to process while we are awake. And we leave this to spirit. We leave this to be taken care of. It's okay for you not to process everything, not to process all the traumas. You can let yourself be healed by life, by the cycles of life. This is another message. Let yourself be healed. Let yourself be taken care of by life itself. Let's bring the other cards. And we have myth and the unconscious. We have talked about the unconscious already. And we have myth. In the dreams, we will live in a life where um, we can have myths, stories, we can make up everything in order to understand ourselves. In the unconscious we understand our deepest self. In the unconscious we understand our deepest self, our deepest desires and we make our dreams and our myths and then when we And then when we wake up, we simply follow those dreams and those myths. So do not discount the unconscious. Do not discount its power and what it can do for you. You will create those new dreams in there and when you wake up again, when you bring that awareness back again, you will have so much energy to make them happen. So trust the dreams. Another message is to trust your dreams. To trust for where they get you, what they bring and their messages. To trust your subconscious, your unconscious, your intuition, to really understand that yes, the other worlds and the inner worlds and the invisible worlds are, are there, they are real. You are living in them every day and uh, do not discount them, they are there for you. And they support your life, they support your dreams and your manifestations and the cycles that you go through. Another message for you will be to trust 
what you forget. I mean to accept that you can forget. And that's not a big deal. That everything will be here in the unconscious. It will not get lost. You can access it whenever you need it, even if you do not remember it. So it is okay to forget. You do not need to have control over everything that you know. And to keep that uh, awakeness with force. And now we will bring these three oracle cards to answer a few questions. And the first question is how you can use this message in order to take advantage of all of the benefits it may bring you. So, we have women supporting women. Together we can transcend our individual limitations. Wow, that's so beautiful. So we have that um, you will benefit of a circle of women or a sacred cir cir oh, circle. <laughs> if you are a man, you will actually benefit from a circle of women to go and actually inspire yourself with their energy, to sit there and just enjoy their energy, to bring your feminine energy into this circle because this feminine circle will help you understand the cycles of life and accept them will help you understand the subconscious the unconscious will help you understand your dreams the signs of the environment of nature and will bring you a lot of love will help you with the sleep, will help you with the rest, will help you with loving hands, will guide you to accept all of these cycles of life. And another supporting message is that this, these things that are happening to you do not last forever and that you can trust the will, you can trust the change, you can trust the seasons to come back again. You can also trust the, the unconscious, the collective energy, the collective consciousness, the eternal, the source. You can trust it even if it's dark, even if you do not see anything, even if you go through such an upheaval, such a nightmare. You can trust that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You can trust that there is an end to all of this. And this sacred circle, I am also hearing this ceremony and ritual. So you may, it may be helpful for you to engage in ritual, in ceremony, in order to be more in tune with the cycles of the moon, of the earth, of the seasons. Now let's see in which areas of life you can best apply this. And we have Pisces and we have Retrograde Review. So you can best apply this to your spiritual self, to your spiritual development and to the past, to the understanding of what, have ha what has happened to you in the past, uh, to the cycles in which you have uh, lived in the past, you can understand your life, make a review of your actions, of how things go in cycles, and you can understand that uh, these cycles give us stability that they are there to help us, not to hinder us. So, the last one is emotional release and this is what you will heal if you receive this message and you accept it and you integrate it. 
and you apply it to yourself, you will get to have an emotional release, to release yourself of the pain, of the trauma, and to heal, to have this emotional expression be free, the, unco the unconscious be free, to let everything go and uh, enjoy, even if you cry, even if you have pain, to understand that it's not forever and to release them. You will learn to accept the cycles of receiving something and releasing, receiving and releasing. Now we're gonna end with an affirmation and it is exploring unity consciousness and I am one eternal light appearing as all. And this tells me that by doing this, by accepting this message and also the cycles of life, you will connect with everything. You will learn how to transcend. You will learn how to have unity consciousness because you will accept all of these changes. You will live in them. You will be one with them. These are all of the messages for you. May you find the peace in the change of the seasons. If you like this video, if you like this reading, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope I see you in the next reading. Bye!